going on YouTube? So today is a very special day. It's the day of my final recital at the Juilliard School and I'm freaking out. Oh, by the way, check out what I did to Triple E by accident. You see this right here? This little scratch? I hit it on this stand when I was practicing and yeah, so I'm super sad about that. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna say because Juilliard requires that we speak from the stage in a recital and so I don't know what I'm gonna say. Hold on. Oh, I'm allergic to cats and this is where the cat lives. This is her litter box over there. Oh. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out what to say and tell, tell, me, tell me what you think about this. <clears throat> Welcome to Journey's End, a recital. Tonight we will be playing a program in E flat. It's a great key. I feel very awkward doing this. I don't know. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm gonna have to work on that. <laughs> so I'm really nervous and. It's just weird doing this for the very last time at Juilliard. I'm actually going through um, right now. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to say in between the pieces. So let me know what you think about this. So this next piece was composed by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It was a trio for clarinet, viola, and piano. What's really funny about it is that there was never a piece before this one composed for this composition of instruments. Uh, the subtitle of this piece is called Kegelstadt. And Kegelstadt means in German, uh, bowling alley. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because there was a piece that Mozart wrote before this one. It was called, well, it wasn't called anything, but it was uh, K476. And it was 12 duos for two French horns. And Mozart wrote on the manuscript at the very front, and, and, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing. Yo, bro, uh, I thought about this piece when I was playing some Kegelstadt. <laughs> and so publishers in the 19th century had mistakenly confused that piece, those 12 duos for two French horns, with this trio. And they named this piece Kegelstadt. What's really funny is that there's no evidence connecting this piece to Kegelstadt at all, other than Mozart loved the game. So now I invite you to put on those questionable, ugly shoes, and let's go play some Kegelstadt. So, what do you think? I don't know, it's kind of, I think it's kind of lame, but I, uh, uh, it'll work. <laughs> now I'm just waiting on some food, I'm doing some last minute practicing, and we're gonna head over to the school. <laughs> Just kidding, I forgot. I'm actually leaving after the recital and I'm going to Boston for three days. I need to pack, because my bus leaves at midnight. Finished the recital, now I'm on my way to Boston. Got a lot of people hanging around here. <laughs> but I'm so tired, guys. Oh my god. Woo! Look, there's a mega bus. I wonder if that's mine. Am I beating it? Am I beating it? <laughs> guys, I fed up bad. See, I didn't bring a coat and I didn't bring the right shoes because I didn't expect this. Dude, it's snowing. We were on the butt on the way to Boston and we had to stop here because the, the driver can't see what's going, we're not gonna going make on. It. We're not gonna make it, we're gonna die. There's the bus right there. Guys, we are stuck. Uh we were supposed to be in Boston by now, but we're not not even close. We're like an hour and a half away. So, I might not get any sleep tonight. Yeah. Look at the shoes I brought. I didn't bring snow boots, dude. Come on. Okay, just got to South Station. It is 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we arrived here two hours later than we were supposed to. So, uh, 
Looks like I'm not going to sleep tonight, guys. Dude, I've never seen snowflakes this big before. Like one hit me in the face and like, it like made my whole face wet. <laughs> Yo, so uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, I haven't been to bed yet. It's, it's the end of the next day after my recital. It was crazy, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened. So I was on my way to Boston. I jumped on a mega bus and I caught a couple of these. I slept for like maybe an hour and then I woke up when the driver stopped on the side of the road. And I was like, what's going on, man? I thought we were going to Boston, what's going on? So the driver like told us over the uh, speaker that he has to stop because it's snowing so hard he has to go out and wipe the windshield wipers clean. So at this point, I'm like freaking out because I'm, I'm thinking, yo, if I don't get uh, to Boston in time, I'm gonna be late for the recording and then like that's not gonna look good professionally, you know what I mean? So it gets so bad we have to stop at a, at a gas station and you saw that part, that's when I was freaking out because I didn't look at the weather and I didn't realize that it was gonna be snowing, it was gonna be 22 degrees here in Boston. I only brought short sleeve shirts and a hoodie. So long story short, I get to uh, Boston South Station at 6 40 a.m. I should have been there at 4 40 a.m. On top of that, we had to deal with I had to deal with um the weekend schedules of the Boston subways and, and the bus schedules. So long story short, it took me another two hours to get to my destination, which is right here, my friend John Hannifin's apartment. <laughs> He's out right now getting some snacks and I'll see if I can bring him in on the vlog a little bit later. So then I went straight to the studio and started recording. Hadn't slept all day and we had to record for nine hours. I'm tired and I'm gonna go to bed really soon. And I might just end it there. Oh, before I go, remember TVK's tip of the day. If you plan on making a career in music, it's important to be nice to people. And I know this sounds really weird and it sounds like something that is kind of a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how many people do not take the time to get to know people. And when I say get to know people, not talk about yourself, not like talk about like what you're doing and all these other things. What I'm saying is be interested, genuinely interested in other people. That's the way to get people really to be interested in you, is if you are the most interested person in the room. And ask people, genuinely care about what they have to say and find ways that you can help them. If somebody says they love cat videos, you should go ahead and find your favorite cat video and send it to them. That's a way of giving them value in their lives. You're not asking for anything. You're genuinely trying to make their lives better. And that's what it means to be a good networker in the music world. You're genuinely trying to help people achieve their dreams and goals. And when you do that, you'll find people who will want to do the same for you. So my tip of the day is to be the kindest, most interested person you can possibly be. Also, I just remembered I didn't ask you guys the comment question of the day. What's your favorite achievement that you've ever achieved. I want to hear them. I want to see positive comments. So uh, deposit them below and I'll answer guys. Looking forward to it.